Good morning. Welcome to our daily chapel this fine Wednesday. Bear with me this morning as I have quite a few announcements. So tonight at eight o'clock, we have our Wednesday evening worship, which will consist of prayer stations. And then tomorrow, Andrea, our chapel musician, will lead us in a mindful meditation. And then Friday in Daily Chapel, we'll have one of our co-presidents of campus ministry leadership, Grace Porter, over there. It will be her senior chapel as she graduates this December. And then in the evening of that Friday, it will also be her senior recital. And we will also be celebrating our 2021 premiere of our Augsburg Vespers, which you can RSVP for online. Also, I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but we've kind of switched out colors from green to blue. Um, and this, because we are in a different season of church and this season is known as Advent. So if you're not familiar with the season of Advent, it is a season of four weeks um, leading up to the celebration of Christmas day. And in Latin, the word Advent means coming. And it is where we prepare our hearts, minds, and souls for the coming of Jesus in the Christian tradition. So this morning, we will hear a wonderful message from President Pribinow reflecting on Advent of God's time, who we are truly blessed to have with us this morning. And so this last thing I want to bring your attention to today is that it's also World AIDS Awareness Day which we want to acknowledge the tragic toll of lives it has taken and as it spread throughout the world and the decades. And the harm that this disease of stereotyping has caused and continues to cause to this day, including gender inequality, prejudice and judgment against sexual orientation, prejudice against race, systemic injustice, an unequal distribution of wealth. So let us take a moment of silence to remember all of those who have died or have been affected by this disease. And with that, let us live into Advent by preparing our hearts and minds for worship today. Let us pray. Mother, Father, Creator, God the Divine, we sit in the wait, in this feeling of wanting something so deeply. Open our hearts and minds as we explore this feeling in Advent paying attention to the wonder and mystery around us in the here and now, reminding us of the advent of your time. Amen.
you, Andrea. Beautiful. A reading from Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. The days of our life are 70 years, or perhaps 80, if we are strong. Even then, their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So teach us to count our days, that we may gain a wise heart. Grace and peace to you from God, our creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On the weekend, I was thinking about the title of this homily. It was, of course, the first weekend of this new church year, the liturgical season we call Advent. I was thinking about it as I spent countless hours helping my high school daughter to finish her college applications. Patience, I thought to myself. God, give me patience. It's a prayer we all might offer up as Advent begins, and we try to make sense of our life together as God's people in the world, as a people who have received the gift of faith and now must live in the world as those with whom God has come to dwell. Patience, we pray. God, give us patience. As Psalm 90, assigned for this first week in Advent, shows us, patience is a long-standing theological topic. A thousand years for God is like a day just gone by, the psalmist sings. My theological understanding of patience did not, however, come to me in my long years of divinity school study. Instead, I learned this important theological concept while reading a series of children's books by Madeline Lingle, who was a wrinkle in time, was the story of a quirky girl named Meg, her overly intelligent little brother, and their time transcending journey to save their physicist father with the help of three mysterious beings. There you had the whole story wrapped up into one sentence. Lengel is the writer who first taught me the incredible difference between two words in Greek, chronos and kairos, which both are translated in English as time, but in the original Greek are vastly different. Chronos is the time on your watch, time on the move, passing from present to future and so becoming past. Kairos, on the other hand, is qualitative rather than quantitative. It's time as a moment, a significant occasion and measurable quality. Kairos is God's time, it's real time, it's the eternal now. As the Advent season begins, we recall the remarkable ways in which Kronos or Kairos has broken into our Kronos and how our lives will never be the same. When our God broke into human history to proclaim the kingdom among us, God came to show us in Kronos the reality of Kairos. Our God, heaven cannot hold him, we proclaim, in a favorite Advent hymn. Kairos is that time, God's time, which breaks through Cronus with a shock of joy, a time where we are far more real than we can ever be when we are continually checking our watches. Are we willing and able to be surprised, Lingle asks. If we are to be aware of life while we are living it, we must have the courage to relinquish our hard-earned control of ourselves. We must have the courage and patience to live aware that the kingdom of God is close at hand. And here we are, just like the shepherds in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, going about our ordinary work. When an angel appears before them and the glory of the Lord shines around them, do not be afraid, we heard yesterday in our Advent Vesper service, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people for today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. At this invasion of Kairos into the routine of Kronos, the shepherds choose to respond with action. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So what will we do living in the same curious paradox somewhere between the already and the not yet presented with a similar decision? Are we willing to be surprised again by Christ's coming? Are we willing to act on it? Are we able to release the nervous control of our daily schedules in order to stop and see the Christ, the eternal now in our midst? Are we able 
to find the patience we need to be God's Kairos people in the world. I've been thinking a great deal lately about time and patience and how hard it is to keep up with all the demands placed upon me by myself and others. We're part of a university community in which schedules and time demands mean that we are driven by Kronos. And yet the message of the Advent season is be patient for there is something remarkable to happen to and for you. In other words, you are about to know once again, the gift of Kairos. And here we are living in that tension between human time and God's time. I've learned important lessons about time and patience from several sources. I wanna just give you a few examples. I've read and reread James Gleick's fascinating book of essays from 1999 called Faster, The Acceleration of Just About Everything. How about that title? It hits pretty close to home, doesn't it? Listen to Gleick's words. We're in a rush, we're making haste. Compression of time marks, he was writing this in 1999, the century now closing. Airport gates are minor intensifiers of the lose not a minute anguish of our age. There are other intensifiers, places and objects that signify impatience. Doctors waiting rooms, the door closed, button and elevator soften a placebo with no function but to distract us for a moment when we are so anxious, so impatient. And then I turn to Witold Ripsinski's biography of the great 19th century landscape designer, Frederick Law Olmsted. In the preces for the book, we read this very simple quote from Olmsted. I quote, I have all my life been considering distant effects and always sacrificing immediate success and applause to that future. With those disquieting words, Olmsted, the designer of Central Park in New York and the Mount Royal Park in Montreal, reminds us that the horizon of our lives matter. We must think on the end times, on the future good, on the history of our work and relationships for only in our distant effects will we find the strength and courage and wisdom and patience to do our best work today in the midst of this time. William Schweiker, who teaches ethics at the University of Chicago, offers a theological take on Olmsted's distant effects when he writes that we live best as creative stewards of time. He describes two threads of thought concerning time, one that time is full and the other that time is empty. And we live in the tension between those two threads and creative stewards of time, he argues, are full of patience as they negotiate the tension. And in the midst of that tension between time that is full and empty, we must act, we must go on, we must do as God intends for us to do. I find my inspiration to act in biblical passages like this morning's Psalm and in wonderful devotional books like Martin Marty's, Our Hope for Years to Come, The Search for Spiritual Sanctuary, in which Marty offers these spirited and comforting words about our times, words that help me find the patience to live and act in the tensions between Kronos and Kairos. And I quote, from the distance come sounds trumpeting encouragement. They herald reinforcements at hand to be relied upon in our efforts at any day of this day and night. Here is the good news of Advent. God is breaking into our lives. The kingdom is come. Our God, heaven cannot hold him. And as we live, as we live, the tension of Kairos and Kronos, wondering whether we have the courage and patience of the shepherds whose response to the proclamation of Kairos was to go and find the Christ child. There are sounds. There are sounds of trumpeting encouragement. There are reinforcements at hand. There is our God who loves us so much, so much so that God came into our midst so that we might know the joy and surprise and grace of God's kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Reinforcements are at hand. May they be for all of us the source of comfort and strength and wisdom to live as Kairos people. Patience, we pray. God, give us patience. Advent blessings to you and thanks be to our God, Emmanuel, with us forever and ever. Amen.
we respond in song? This song we've done a few times, We Resist by Mark Miller. And we'll be singing each of those verses. And then today adding the verse from Taizé by Jacques Viter, Wait for the Lord. Here it goes. We resist, we refuse to let hatred win. We rise up, we won't back down. We're in this till the end. We resist, we resist, we refuse to let hatred win. We rise up, we won't back down. We're in this till the end. Pray now, pray for your enemies. Welcome the stranger. So love to your neighbor. We're in this till the end. We pray, pray for your enemies. Welcome the stranger. Show love to your neighbor. We're in this till the end. We wait, wait for the Lord whose day is near. Wait for the Lord, be strong, take heart. Now go in patience and be Kairos people. Amen. <laughs> 